Shabbat Shalom to all of you. This parashat Korach is a, is a continuation of the, uh, of the times of the formation of Israel as, as a peoplehood, as, as a nation, uh, just after leaving uh, Egypt. And in this period of those, the two first years, they are basically trying to get acquaintance with each other, trying to become all, all the people together. And they are trying to establish themselves, their priorities and their formation and their order. We have been seeing from the, from the beginning of Bamikbar about the God is a God of order. Let's say his name, he tries to make order and he tries to organize his people. In this organization, that's always we are going to see that needs to be a leader and need to be other sub leaders, and in that way, uh, the uh, the administration of the whole uh, Kahal Israel is taken in the right way. The work for one man will be impossible, and this man to be a good leader needs to have the help of other people. Then, when we see and we see that the organization doesn't work. There is something wrong. Now we need to examine why certain things don't happen, why certain things are not working, why a, everything looks like that is in chaos. Remember, order is the opposite of chaos. You know? Now, who will benefit with chaos? Or not? Uh, the truth of the matter is, in a chaotic situation, you know, there are very few people that they make a lot of points. And you want to see that people, when they see that a system is working, they don't like it. And because they don't like it, they are going to try to undo it in order for themselves to put in a position of leadership. The idea in the Torah is basically is always the same. It's God, blessed be his name, who choose a person, a leader or, or a nation to do a determined type of job, determined type of task. They are chosen. It's no uh, absolutely uh, strength to say about the chosen people. Why they are chosen? They are chosen because they have a very special task. Now, other people can be chosen too, to do different tasks. Israel was chosen for a very specific task to bring the rest of humanity to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to bring back to the true and only one God. That was the role of Israel as it to be an organization, you know? For example, in Shemot chapter 19, 19 when basically there is a declaration from our Creator that the whole nation of Israel is a nation of priests and is a holy nation. I already, in, in the book of Baikra, uh, in the book of uh, Leviticus, I explained to you about the, the, the what really the meaning of holy and holiness and, and, their, and their derivatives. And the, basically an extension is to be chosen or to be separated for something special, you know, or to somebody separated for something. And they take that in the, 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 they take the, uh, the, the uh, how would I say, they identify with the person who have all the things have been separated with. But this is important about being holy. You know, and I told you that even in, in the Torah, the term being holy doesn't mean only to have a, a little circle over your head like we have seen uh, in, in many uh, books and literature, but also could be to the worst, you know, all depending what you are aligned to. Now, when God Almighty creates his people, you know, he creates an order, and everyone, everyone has a role to play. Everyone. Everybody, everyone is very important. You know? Uh, only to give you an, a, a, only a, uh, a comparison. 
I don't know how many of you have worked with people who are paraplegic. I mean, the, uh, all the body is paralyzed and the only thing is the neck up and they, they can sing, they can talk. And you as a paraplegic, you know, would you like that the rest of your body will function? <laughs> that was an obvious question, no? They would say yes. But if you see somebody who has lost their legs, and you say, would you like to have back your legs? Of course. This is when you start learning that some part of your body are as important as the rest of the body. In order that you can move from point A to point B, you need to have those parts in your body. If you don't have it, you need to depend on others, and they need to move you. Well, a body is a very good uh, illustration about a nation. In the nation, there are many parts, and each one plays a very important role. And when we start thinking that my part is better than your part, this is when you start getting in trouble. Or when somebody wants to be something that it is not. For example, when uh, the, the heart uh, has a uh, the, 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 the lung is jealous of the heart, you know, and say, why everybody thinks that you are the most important when I give you oxygen? Without me, you cannot function, you know? Um, and then the blood, they, they want to say, hey, hey, wait a minute. I, you both depend on me. And, and, and we keep doing this. Each one going to say, I am more important than you are. And the truth of the matter, the importance of each one of the parts depending on the wholeness of the body. But what happens when the blood wants to be a heart, and when the heart wants to be a lung, and when the lung wants to be a, uh, a, a heart? You know, you get really complicated, and, and I can assure you that that body won't last too long, will be dead. This is what happens in every body organization in any system in any nation and then you're going to you're going to see there are many situations in which happen is that the individuals they feel they have a sense they have not been fairness with them you have not been fair with me they are now complaining without realizing about the decision of that order to God Almighty you know, for example, I want to give you here a little idea. One of the reasons that most of the community of Israel today, especially the Orthodox Jewish community and the other Jewish people, reject our Messiah Yeshua because they have not accepted what God from the beginning has revealed to us and they have made their own understanding about what God wants about the Mashiach. Then, that is indirectly an status quo of the person of the nation who doesn't want to accept the role that God has given to the Mashiach. And they are, are right now, believe me or not, Israel is in total rebellion against God Almighty. Now, the question is, if he's totally in rebellion, why God has not disappeared in Israel yet? Because you're going to see that the process of God, the justice and punishment, goes with the same idea of the process of correcting and making them uh, coming back to their own, to the right understanding. The process has been always the same way. You know, the Torah has not changed the, the principle. The principles are there. But if we don't see those principles, we, we start making other things that they are not. Now, I can say to you right now that Israel is in disobedience. Why? Because they have not accepted the Mashiach that God sent to us. Why? Because supposedly today doesn't fulfill the requirements that God told us what the Mashiach was going to be. The truth of the matter is, in the Torah, very clear, tell you the role of Mashiach, you know? And when you see and you study carefully in the scriptures about that, 
God reveals in very clear way, in my understanding, maybe I am biased, but in my understanding, He reveals in very clear way the two types of Mashiach and two different functions. One is going to come to bring us together, and the other is going to come to reign. I am trying to make it very simple, I'm not trying to complicate it. The first one, Mashiach ben Joseph. By the way, this is nothing new in the Jewish literature in the, among the sages and the rabbis. Mashiach ben Joseph, or the suffering servant, you know? The Mashiach Honi, he is the poor Mashiach. He is the one that is, needs to come to go through difficulties in order to bring us, us as Israel together. Now, we can understand that in between this Mashiach ben Joseph and Mashiach ben David, the triumph Mashiach, there, has, there is a period of time that we are in between. And this in between is creating a lot of problems because we are waiting. You know? Let's go back to Korah, only to, to, to give you a parallel. No? Korah, they are already two years in the desert. For them it's already an eternity. You know? They, they have been promised, they have been promised that they are going to be in the land of uh, milk and honey. They're going to be, they're going to be enjoying everything that they can imagine. You know? And uh, they, they thought that God was going to give it to it in a golden uh, uh, in a golden platter. And they were going to receive it and they, they were going to be honky dory the rest of their life. But God works in different ways. He gave it to you, but you need to obtain it. You need to work for it. You know? And that's the part that they didn't like. The next thing is, the question is, who told you that you are my boss? How many, how many of us, we get to that point? You know, for Mashiach, Yeshua came. What was the, the, who were the ones that, that gave him the hard time? All the, what I call it, the organized status quo, political and religious. They were the ones, the, the unerates, the, the regular people. They never gave him a problem. Totally the contrary. They follow him. They love him. They want him. He was popular among the people. Uh, he was not a politician. Because if he was a politician, he could turn everybody against them. But uh, he accepted and they recognized who he was. How many times you have heard, uh, especially among the Jewish circles, that Yeshua was never accepted by the Jewish people as Messiah. And this is the the front. And this is totally, uh, totally the religion. And it's totally false. It's totally false. It's a false uh, expression. Yet there were a group where it was a minority who rejected Yeshua. And this was the status quo, the political and religious setting. So the Sadducees or the Kohenims uh, at that time and the other group, very sick. But you know, very interesting, I have been doing a very interesting study lately and the Qumran people, they look at him as the Messiah. That is very interesting, you know? This is the reason John the Baptist, you know, was one of those who uh, uh, saw that and recognize it. And John the Baptist, he was a Kohenim. He was a Kohen, you know? But he had withdrawn from the Jerusalem and he had gone to Qumran. And, and what the Qumran people had in their mind? In their mind was that the, the temple, the Mishkan, the, the Bet Midrash, was not any longer what supposedly needs to be and had been desecrated and for that reason didn't hold the sanctity that they needed to have and they withdraw and they say that temple is no any longer representing the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and, and we are going to withdraw until we find a new, we find a new priesthood and that's how came the priesthood of Melchizedek, of Melech Sadek, okay, Sadok. Uh, and by the way, until 1947, 
the the Qumran uh, papyrus or writings, scroll were found, most of the most of the what I would call the Jewish scholars would say that the book of Hebrews in the new and the Messianic writings we call New Testament was an invention of the Gentile. Uh, what I call it a a way a a, a wishful thinking. They were making up this idea of the Melchizedek uh, priesthood. And then when they went and they discovered in the caves, to be exact, 11 caves, Q13, you're going, uh, you're, going to, you're going to find that there is a totally a, a statement, a, a, a study about the priesthood of Melchizedek that is going to come back. You know, and this is what I personally believe that the book of Hebrews was written by one of the uh, followers of the Qumran or the John the Baptist. Now, I don't know want to sidetrack, but I, I want to tell you why this idea that my Messiah Yeshua was not accepted by the people of Israel is totally a made up theology. And the problem is, this is the problem. You have heard me this before, and I'm going to repeat it again. When two major religions agree on something, run away from that. For Christianity, it was very important to make Yeshua not only the sacrifice, but the persecutor by that evil race that was the Jews who killed him. Okay? Then they both finally agree. The, the Israelis. Uh, the community at that time said, we have never accepted him as the Messiah and the Christianity said, yeah, you know he didn't accept it, you killed him. Right? They both agree. Anytime, and I want to give you another agreement, okay? The, 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 the scriptures, the Torah, supposedly according to uh, rabbinical Judaism, Orthodox Judaism, the Torah is only for the Jewish people. What the idea to be only going What the idea to give it to them uh, and to reveal what God is doing for the rest of humanity? You know, they, and this, yeah, this is only, the Goyims, they do not need to follow Torah. They can do the seven Noahic laws, you know? This is another rabbinical invention, okay? But, is a part, I call it invention because part of the tradition. And what I call invention, you need to understand this. One thing to me is revelation. Another thing is men's uh, addition. Okay? Not that necessarily the men's addition will be bad, but sometimes when the addition of men goes against the scripture, goes against Torah, you need to choose Torah. You cannot choose uh, men's tradition. Okay? Then, what the Christianity does? Christianity says, you're right. Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus Christ, fulfilled, you know, all the Torah, and for that reason, he destroyed Torah. He doesn't need to, to, to we don't need to keep Torah anymore. Now, both communities agree on something. Uh, Shabbat, this is another one, you know. According to the Jewish uh, uh, hierarchical religious setting, Shabbat is only for the Jewish people. What the Christians say? You're right, because we have now Sunday. You see, any time that they, two people agree, those two institutions agree, run away from them. Because you, they are telling you that they are dividing and separating. They do not want the universality of God to all mankind. They want to bring. And Yeshua principle was to bring the Jews back to Torah and bring in Israel back to Torah, bring the world back to Torah. That is what the Messiah's role was, is. And we cannot change it. Let me go back to Korah again. What is Korah does? Have you heard the saying? Divide to conquer. You know what? What happened when you you become 
a politician. As a politician, you can be a demagogue. And as a demagogue, you can offer to people so many things that the people get excited. You know, do you want this? I give it to you. Do you want this? I give it to you. You know, I just no longer ago I received through emails a caricature about a, you know, it's very well known in uh, uh, today, that they, they, from, especially from Nigeria, they come uh, a lot of emails that the people say, I am a great chief or great king, and then I, got, I, I won the lottery, and the only thing that uh, the, I have $3 million, but I, I already have too much money, and you have been chosen to give me my $3 million gladly that I want to give it to you. The only thing that you need to do is to give me your banking account, and I will send it to you, the $3 million. You know, you send it your, million, your, your banking account, and the next year, the next day, uh, instead to have three million dollars, you have minus three million dollars. No, uh, that, that's it. Well, uh, they, 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 the caricature was, uh, and I don't want to say it because I, I won't, I won't create problems. But I was talking about another leader who, who has promised you a lot of things. You know, the panacea, the politicians, who they promise you the panacea. And they say, if you give me your boat, I want to do this for you. And then when you give your boat, you know, they, they start asking you so many things that you destroy your life. You destroy your community, you destroy everything. That's the problem with politicians, demagogues. They promise you something that they know they cannot fulfill, but it sounds very good. There is another saying, it sounds too good, run away from it too. Okay? Yeah, because it isn't too good. Well, Kora has this problem. Let's talk about Korach a little bit. Let's talk about Datang and Abira in the, in, the family, in the familiar sense, who they were. This is important to understand. You know, in the, in, in the Jewish uh, tradition, there is a very nice story about Datang and Abira, and there is a story about Korach. Korach, the idea of Korach was, he was one of the greatest masters before the, they left Egypt, and he was the go-between Egypt, the government of Egypt, and Israel. He was the one that hired and bring the, the workers of uh, the Israelis. He gave a job and doing things, and he exploded and he got a commission. You know, he became very wealthy. He was a leader, very wealthy leader, and he was very abusive when he was uh, uh, in, in Egypt, and when he left, he left with all his wealth. The problem is that, you know, in the desert, what you want to do with a lot of gold, you know? <laughs> uh, and and, and in, the, in the desert, the, what more, more important was to have water and to have gold. Gold, you couldn't drink it, you know? And all those things. Uh, um, and he was not as popular because they were not any longer afraid of him, you know? The, the, he didn't need to give any job to them. At that time, they were free to do their own thing. The second, Datam Yabiram, there is another story. That Datam Yabiram, do you remember when Moshe Rabenu uh, defended these two uh, Israelis that the, the Egyptian was beating them up? And then, uh, uh, and then uh, he killed the Egyptian. And then the next day he went back and saw both of them fighting. You know, and he tried to stop and to make peace and say, who are you to, to govern us? Who are you and now? Do you want to kill us like you killed the, uh, the Egyptian and he ran away? And these two both were Datam and Abiram. And that's what he said, that's the story. Well, I want to add something now from the Torah, what is very interesting. You know, who is uh, Korah, which is his family here, tell you, you know, uh, where he comes from. From, from who is his father? Uh, he is a son of Levi, you know, um, uh, from his, uh, uh, from Kohat, you know, a Kohatai. There were three brothers from descended from Levi: Gershon, Kohat, and Merari. Okay, Kohat was the second one, and Merari was the youngest one. You know? Now, 
eh, the way that is then uh, Kohat eh, he has five children no or three no no sorry uh, according to, to the Torah have four children you know and Ram who is the father of uh, Moshe Aaron and Miriam then you have Yishar the one that is mentioned here who is the father of Korah who was the oldest one Nefer and Sihri no then we have Hebron as the third child, uh, third child but Hebron doesn't have descendants maybe he, he died before he, he never married I don't know and then Uziel and Uziel has three other children Mishael Elisiphan and Sifri and Elisiphan if you read very carefully in the number chapter 3 and chapter 4 you're going to see the roles of this one and there is giving to Eli Elisiphan the leader of the Kahatites and jump over Korach Korach was the oldest one and his father was older than the father of Elisiphan who was the younger one his, the father of Elisiphan was Usia you can see that it's, that's not fair. Now, by the way, this is nothing new in the Torah. In the Torah we have seen over and over again that this happens. Always the youngest is chosen over the old. No? But what that produce? Yes. Then let's look a little bit about uh, what in, in, in the camp we already have seen in the camp, uh, the middle of the camp was the Mishkan. And then in the Mishkan, they were divided in four areas. You know, in the top of going to the, to the east, there was uh, Aaron, the, Co uh, the Kohenim, Moses was there. And the next circle or square was Judah east. The, in the south, uh, they divided in the, in the, the other three tri uh, groups of families of Levi, you know, Mirari, uh, uh, Kahat and Gershom and where, which side they gave it to Kahat? The south okay, he was on the south and what there was going to be the job the, the best job that any Levite could have to transport the holy for holy the, the, uh, the art the around all those things you know, they, they were in the top what more, much more than, how much more prestige they want then, and and who in the extra circle who were on the south? Ruben, the, the tribe of Ruben. Okay? Then they were close to each other. There is a saying that unhappiness is contagious. And the other thing is the enemy of my enemy is my friend. You know? They got together and then what happened with Ruben? What was the problem with Ruben too? Ruben was the firstborn that was taking out the, first, the birthright that was given to Joseph. Now, we can explain it in many ways, but there were two areas in which it was basically dispute. There were the political, social uh, area and the religious area. Korach basically was fighting for the religious area. He wanted to be a priest. You know? And from all this side, Datan and Abiram, they were fighting against Moshe. You know? Who had named you the leader? We are older than you, we will follow the older uh, house, and you are you, you are the political leader. In, in that case, we need to be the political leader. To add the malice to this situation, 200 chief times, Behorim, firstborn, you know, they joined to the group. All of them upset with the way the the uh, the firstborn had been taking away their rights because they were giving everything to the Levites. No, and they were fighting for their rights. Everybody was unhappy. And the question is this: Who gave you that job? Who? Make you the leader. Did you ask me? Do I vote for you? I give you my vote. 
totally the contrary. You basically enthrone yourself and you are making a nepotism or nepotism, no? Because it's all in the family. You, your brother is the high priest, your sister is the prophetess, and you are the, the chief god, and, and it's all in the family. <coughs> Give me a break. I look like that, something like that, because when Moshe Rabbeinu talks to Korah and trying to calm him down, say, Korah, Korah, you don't realize your position? But God has elevated you, has put you in such a wonderful place. And while you are blind, there's nothing that you can do. And these 250 men go with, with Korah. Now, there are, uh, according to depending who made the study and who made the, 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 uh, the synopsis of this chapter, they say that there were from two to four types of re uh, rebellions. The two basic rebellions was Korah and the, the, the town of Iran. The second was the 250, and the third one was the people of Israel, the former. one. Okay? Depending how you see how you look at it, because all of them suffer, by the way, for their rebellion. Now, the question, uh, because you can read many things here in the Torah, but to me what I am interested in is about principles more than to, to to try to dissect a little, little point and to try to say, and he look at in the right with the right eye or with the left eye. I don't care. What I care is about the attitude and, and how they acted. This is what is important to see and why. When you are unhappy with the position that you are, this is a very general statement, but you need to, when you are unhappy with the position that you are, you need to examine first your heart. The first thing that you need to do is to examine your heart. I am unhappy, why? Because I wish to have a, a better position. If you want to have a better position, I want a better position because I want to serve, or, or I want a better position because I want to uh, uh, be uh, uh, known by other people. You see, there is two different reasons. When you have clarified those two things, you can be clear about your intention. Is your intention because you want to serve others? I can assure you that God will promote you accordingly. But if you decide it is for your own sake to be promoted yourself, to be uh, a, enjoying the acceptance of other people, and then other people say, oh, hula, hula, hula to you, then you are going to fail. Let's go back to Messiah Yeshua. He was elevated to the greatest position that could be elevated. And he never ever looked for adulation. Ever. And all the glory gave it to his father. God, blessed be his name. Not to him, to his father. He said, I have not come from my own, I have come for what God has sent me to do, my father, our father. Then, it's the people who got jealous of him. Because the religious people saw that the other people were following him, not them. And he was teaching them Torah, and he was saying, what do you teach as human being is wrong. They got jealous. When you are put on the spot, and when people tell you what you are saying, doing, is not right before God, you need to really question. No long ago came a, a young man here to this community and told me directly that I was doing the work of Satan. You know? And even that God is my witness. I was very very, uh, uh, what do you hear, tranquil, very uh, calm, uh, and I knew in my inner being that I was trying to teach what is right. I started checking. Why? Because whoever says something, you know, even that could be the most atrocious thing, you need 
to be honest and serve yourself to. And if there is a, a little bit of pride on you, there is something wrong. Because pride, human pride, is not from God. Because there, there is the other type of pride, by the way. It's a heavenly pride. And, and you know that the heavenly pride is not something that you, you, you can enjoy and you say, I am in it. No, it's God who gives it to you, to other people, and that's what they call it respect and reverence. Then, when you come here, you have the uprising, and the uprising is because these people are very unhappy with their position. And they honestly believe that they deserve better. You want to realize how come blind you or me, us, the thirst for power or for wealth or for succeed. We can be blinded. And being blinded, we do not realize that we are doing wrong things. Totally the contrary, we become like uh, those little locomotives, those little trains, those, those little uh, bullies that go through everything, every door, and break it. I don't care. I want to conquer and do whatever I want to do. I don't care who I step on. I don't care who I, I trample on. I don't care who I kill. I want to get what I want. And this is the problem that Korach, Katam, and Abiram face. Moshe Rabbeinu, he realized that his priesthood is put on, of our own priesthood, is put on a, a, a um, on doubt. Who, who selected you? God or your brother? Because if Moshe Rabbeinu selected you as a high priest, that's good. But it does it nepotism. You know? How Moshe Rabbeinu is going to demonstrate that what not him could select Aaron? He doesn't have any other choice. They already have seen what happened with the uh, fire pans, you know, with Nadav and Abihu. And how they were consumed, no? Then he said, okay, you 250 people for born, you want to be priest, you Cora want to be priest, let's go and do the test. Um, in this test, the one that passed the test is going to be the Kadosh. Now, here I want to make this because even in the, in the Jewish translation, it is the Holy One. And they translate the word Kadosh as Holy One. To me, it's a bad translation. Okay? It's, it's not talking about the idea, because when we say Holy One, it means the what comes to our head. Saint. Holy, holy, not saint. No, no. What it means is, has been the one that God has separated, chosen. That's the idea. What is the reason that Israel is a holy nation? Because I've been separated. And nothing to do that are good. Okay? Are you getting there? Okay, you follow me. I don't want to put you to sleep. Well, next, you know, they, they go with their little pants, you know, all happy. And, and this is when you are blinded by your ambition. You need to be careful with the ambition. Because ambition, you know what? Ambition. Um, ambition. Okay? Uh, because you can fall in the trap thinking that you are the last Coca-Cola in the desert. <laughs> and how many people have that problem? That they think they are the best that God could create. And how many people think that they are doing a favor to God to exist? <laughs> and, and this is the people who are totally blinded. They are so full of themselves. That they don't have 
anything else. And they are so sure that they are, that even if they put it, one of the worst situations, they already know that, that you are not the real one, you're going to be chicharron. That means that you're going to be killed, you can be uh, uh, make uh, smoke, the smoke beat them worse than that, you know? Then they go and they participate. And then the people of Israel, when they see that, that time have been done, I want to make a parenthesis here, where they are consumed. Immediately, also, Moshe Rabbeinu calls that time have been done. He said, what to go there? Why you call us? Who do you think you are? You promised us to send us to the land of milk and honey, and you took us out from the land of milk and honey. Now, let me tell you this. One thing is to fight at, against each other. Another thing is to fight against our Almighty God being our Creator, blessed in His name. That is the reason that sometimes I check myself for my people Israel when they constantly they are denying that Yeshua is the Messiah. Because he, you see, Yeshua didn't choose himself. He didn't say, I want to be the Mashiach. He didn't say, you know, I am your Mashiach. He gave it to the people of Israel to see that he was the Mashiach. But what the scripture said, do you remember that portion when uh, Yohanan, the Talmudin, sent his disciples and see and, and, and ask him, him, are you the one that God has sent? He said, yes, I am. No. He said, no, I am not. No. He said, look at what is happening. Look at this and this and that. And then you go and tell him what he was talking about, Torah, scriptures. They understood. There is no worse blind than the one that doesn't want to see. There is no worse deaf person than the one that doesn't want to hear. And this is the problem with Atana and Abiram, this is the problem with Korah. When you are so full of yourself, you need to deflate. By the way, you have already heard my story about being deflated. I know what it means. When you need to eat what I would call it, your humble pie. When you need to really humble yourself before God and to say, I'm sorry, I'm, forgive me, I have done wrong. The prodigal son. The prodigal son. There is so many things that we can see. But the people didn't do it. Korah didn't do it. Full of himself. The tongue of Iran didn't see it. Then the people of Israel, after they killed the 250, the best of the people, they go to Moses and Aaron. Look at what you have done to our people. What you has done to our people. They didn't still even didn't recognize that God did it. What is the power of Moshe Rabbeinu? He couldn't kill them in that way. It was God who did it. And immediately, they said the wrath of God came out so high that all these people had a play. And what Moshe Rabbeinu does? That he hated people? Totally the contrary. He loved them. He made and said to his brother, get a pan that have been killed so many and put it in the middle and take that plate away from them. And only 14,700 died. 14,700. Of course, the matria. Okay. The 14,700 is an allegorical. No. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a conclusive number. A multiple of seven, 14 and seven, and 147 is a multiple of, is, is a multiple of seven, is to tell you 
avant que ça puisse complir la poche. Pour quelques dix, Moshe Rabbeinu was the envoy of God. Mashiach Yeshua is the envoy of God. If you oppose Moshe Rabbeinu, you are opposing God. If you oppose Mashiach Yeshua, you are opposing God. Your ignorance is not an excuse. Your ignorance is not an excuse. Because God has given you enough information. If you don't want to see it, it's because you are full of yourself. We the Jewish people, we don't fall under anybody. You don't fall under anybody, you fall under God. You know, uh, I just learned no long ago, uh, Hamashiach value in the matria is 363. Hamashiach. Now, if you, that, the same letters, Moshe Chai is 363. Moshe Chai. Hamashiach, the Messiah. Moshe Chai, Moses Lee, 363. What the Messiah lives. Moshe lives in the Messiah. That's in the picture of our Messiah Yeshua. He came back to bring us. But there are many Korah. There are something good about Korah. Among all the things that you can see. What is Korah? Korah means a bold person or somebody that has a cold blood. That's what Korach means. But, uh, but what is interesting? From Korach, you have descendants, Asir, El Canaan, Abiyasaf, and from there, you know who is coming? Hanavi Shmuel. Shmuel Hanavi. Shmuel the prophet was a direct descendant of Korach. You see, from something supposedly too bad to something good, you know that the greatest sounds that we have today are from descendants of Korach. And I don't want to get in there, but there is a, another study about if Korach died in the first or in the second one, uh, um, if everybody died or who died, and um, all the Korach descendants died or not. Well, we know that Korach died uh, with a hot pants, but he didn't die when the, the, the lion swallowed the other, the other tongue of Iran. And the, uh, but his descendants still survived because they were very faithful uh, writing the Psalms, especially Psalms 42, is from uh, uh, the next ones is from Korah group. Anyway, I want to finish with this. I think uh, we have a lot of food to digest, okay? And we need to, to little by little eat. But I want to ask you something it is. There's nothing wrong for looking for a, a place to serve. But it's wrong to look for a position. Yeah, you, under, you understand me? Okay. Secondly, envy doesn't count from God, when you envy others, or you covet others. You know, the, the, the commandments of God say, do not covet the house of your neighbors, do not covet the wife, do not covet the things, do not covet everything. You do not need to envy anybody. You need to be grateful to God, and God bless others. And, and when you start saying, God, why do you give it to him and don't give it to me? You start searching your heart. Okay? Because it's very easy to look at others. And sometimes you don't you don't see what God is doing in your life. And sometimes we don't see our blessings. The only thing that we see is the bad thing that happening to us. But we have problems to see the blessings of God, how God is protecting us, how God is holding us up, how God is helping us. And in spite of our own mistakes, God is holding us together more than ever. 
fighting the step that we need to do is to constantly to humble ourselves before God. That's what it is. What is the greatest example that we have? Moshe Rabbein and Yeshua our Messiah. The humblest, humblest people that you can read in, in the Torah and in the scriptures. You know, neither one of the two who were very powerful, if we can say it in that way, they didn't take it to themselves. They didn't even care, stuck up, or better than anybody, but totally the country, they were very humble. You want to be elevated by the people? Allow that God does it. Don't look to be elevated by people. Don't be a politician. Don't look for people to acclaim you or to say, hey, don't look that you will become elevated by people. Look that God will take you in the right place. Anytime. You know, I just told you before, uh, but uh, one time I was offered a very big position, you know, and then they told me why they were not going to give me the position. You know, I'm going to say, first of all, I never wanted, I am glad that you thought about me, you made me feel very good, and now that you're telling me that I cannot be because I have so many defects, thank you too. Why? Because they tell me that I need a lot of room to grow. But I won't be upset. You know, and when they give you something, because they appreciate or they see that you have the qualities or the qualifications to do it, you want, you want to do it, it does is the right place that God wants for you. Because you always you need to check. Instead, to jump on something that looks very nice, first check with God. And you're married, check with your spouse. Check. Always. Because not everything that looks gold is gold. And, and remember, if you, you believe in the theology of the lottery, you will never be successful. The lottery doesn't happen. It's hard work. Sometimes many of us will learn it too late. Some of us will have the time to learn it. Okay? But, uh, but success in the main is God leading us to the right place. You know, in the about, I mentioned to you first that they say very clear that the, the person who is wealthy is the person who is satisfied with you what they have. You know, don't get in a strife wanting somebody else wants. Do not envy other people and be happy with your portion. And God will give you even more. And finally, any good work, any good thing that God has put in your heart, dedicate it to Him and do it. Don't hesitate, work on it. Because when God puts you something in your heart, it's because He's leading you to do what you want. And I always, like I say to you, consult with the people that are close to you in trust. Don't be blinded. Not because you have a, a great idea, meaning that it's going to work until you put it in the right perspective. Everything has a time and place. Everything has its order, and every, everything needs to be done accordingly to what God wants in His presence. Okay. I hope that you have had a good Shabbat. I hope that the, the merits of our Messiah Yeshua be with all of you. To me, I, I learned so much about Moshe Rabbeinu, the same way that I learned so much about Yeshua, our Messiah. And it's amazing how many times, let me tell you, it's amazing how many times I see how alive we are each other and how they have come out. Always know with the support of the people, but with the quality of God.